Hi, I'm John and I'm still a Christian and I'm making some videos to tell you why. Obviously the internet has changed everything. We have access to information right now in a way that's unprecedented in human history. But that access to information does come at a cost. The cost is that for the first time, we are very painfully aware that we don't have all the information. There's a whole universe of knowledge um, out there that we, for the first time, are aware that we don't have. So in the past, human beings were fairly confident that what we knew was enough to build a reasonable model of the world and to live our lives in it. And today we just don't have that certainty anymore because there are new things being discovered and uh, new challenges to our understanding of the universe that come along every day. Related to that is another challenge, something that I'm sure is true today. I might wake up tomorrow and it's not true anymore because of scientific discovery or a challenge to the way that we think about that thing. I might go to bed in the full knowledge that Pluto is a planet and wake up tomorrow learning that it's not a planet and learning that the entire world, because we've decided that it's not a planet, has to rethink our solar system at the same time, in real time, and understand all these new things about what makes a planet and what other bodies are orbiting our sun that we didn't know about before. And so we just can't have the confidence anymore that what we know today will hold true tomorrow. And a third thing that's a little bit more personal is that I now have friends and family members who look at the same evidence of the world that I do and put it together into an understanding of how things work and who we should be that is totally different than the conclusions that I come to. And these are people who are intelligent and they're people who I respect. And in human history, we just didn't have a lot of contact with people that thought differently than we did. Those people tended to be our enemies and now we're having to learn how to live in peace and cooperation with all kinds of different people. And the personal element to that is if the person who I consider to be intelligent, if they look at the same evidence that I look at and they put it together in a different way, then how can I be sure that I'm right about the way that I put it together and that I've come to the proper conclusions? And so we just don't have confidence anymore that we know enough. We don't have confidence that what we know won't be overturned tomorrow. And we don't have confidence that we are the most intelligent people in the world and that we've actually put the evidence that we see in our life experience of reality together in a way that's true. And this uncertainty affects us at every level of society, but it certainly affects us in the faith world. In the faith world, 20 years ago, you could stand up in front of a group of people with confidence and say very clearly and with a reasonable degree of certainty what you believed and you didn't have to face a lot of challenges because most of the people that you were communicating to already thought the way that you were thinking. And that's just not true anymore. We don't have the same religious confidence, the same religious certainty to communicate what we think and believe because we don't have the same confidence and the same certainty in anything that we think and believe. And we can't say anything anymore without qualifying it because we can't be sure that what we say today won't be disproven tomorrow and then we'll look foolish in public, which isn't something that anybody wants. And don't get me wrong, I believe that it's important to think critically about things because certainty and confidence doesn't make things true. But when it comes to faith, there's an internal cost to this new relationship to information that we have and to our new sense of uncertainty about truth. And the cost is to commit completely to something, to commit to a way of life, to commit to a way of seeing the world requires a certain level of confidence in our understanding that we are following something true and that commitment is our faith and the uncertainty that we feel in the social climate right now and our relationship to information kind of cuts away the foundation of a strong and personal faith in the things that we believe. All of us by the time we reach adulthood have seen and heard really serious intellectual and historical challenges to our faith. We're in contact with that information all the time. It's on TV and it's especially on the internet. And so we're struggling just to be confident that what we believe is true, which means that committing to the path that Jesus taught us to walk, the way that he taught us to live, 
is actually beyond the reach of a lot of us because we're still not sure that we have the basic information correct. And I've certainly struggled with both of these things. I've struggled with communicating what I think and what I believe and what the Bible is saying with the confidence and the certainty necessary to make the message land. And I've struggled in my own personal faith to fully commit to the teachings of Jesus in spite of the historical and intellectual challenges to the Christian faith that I've faced. And there are a lot of people right now who are saying, I'm just not going to bother with the whole religious, spirituality, Christianity thing. I'm just going to try to put my life together the best way that I possibly can and be the kind of person that I want to be on my own without a system around it. And uh, I'll just struggle and we'll see how it goes. And try as I might to do that myself, I keep coming back to the Christian faith for a lot of reasons that we'll get to in these videos. But right now, I'd really just like to point out a few things that haven't changed despite the major shift in our relationship to information. The first thing that hasn't changed is that life is a mystery. There is a deep, silent truth underneath all of our talking and all of our ideas and all of our intellectual debates and all of our questions. And if you're just quiet and you go outside and you sit under the stars and you feel the earth under you and it's solid, you know that soon the sun will rise as the earth rotates and all of these things are true no matter what you think or feel about them. And on top of that, you are a human being and you understand, if you're quiet and you're paying attention, you understand your place in the universe. How small you are and how insignificant and how fleeting your life is. And yet within you is this desire and this drive to find your purpose and fulfill it and to contribute in the ongoing unfolding of life and existence in a way that's positive. That is a mystery. Why in the world are we here, aware of what's going on around us in the universe to our limited capacity? And why in the world do we feel such a strong desire within us to be part of it, to be invited to the dance and to contribute? And that pull toward the mystery is one of the things that keeps me coming back to Christianity, but especially Christianity when it's practiced mystically. When Christianity is practiced correctly, it's not an answer book for the mysteries of existence. It's actually a dance with the mysteries of existence. It helps you ask those deep personal questions better than you can on your own. It pushes you to face suffering, and to face your human destiny and purpose. But it pushes you to face those things as the deep fundamental mysteries that they are. And it does so with a hint of hope throughout all of it, that things really are gonna be okay and we really are gonna find a way to fulfill our human potential and become what we were created to be. And so facing the mystery of life, I don't need answers. Because the mystery is the mystery and to face it is to face reality but I do need a little bit of hope that things are gonna work out for me and for all of us and that's something that I get from my faith especially when it's practiced mystically another thing that hasn't changed is that we all still have to pick our path through the world we have to decide who we're gonna be how we're gonna behave what we're gonna work toward who we're gonna become how we're gonna treat the people around us but the problem with human beings is that just believing something or making decisions about how we're going to do something or who we're going to be, that usually doesn't translate into action and into reality. We always struggle to put our ideals into practice. And that brings us to the third thing that hasn't changed, which is that I need help to become who I'm supposed to be. What cutting edge neuroscience has shown is that people are pretty bad at just making decisions and moving toward those goals without any help. And we're also pretty bad at just absorbing lists of rules and instructions and then putting those things into practice. We need to get creative about how we shape ourselves. We need narrative stories that shape our souls. We need cognitive models, like people that we can look at as an example of who we want to be so that we can act like them 
in difficult situations, and we need spiritual practices that actually reshape the gray matter of our brain so that we can become who we're supposed to be and react to the situations that we face in ways that are in line with who we believe ourselves to be. And what we find in the major religions of the world are those three things. We find narrative stories that help reshape our souls. We find people that are set up as examples of, of human beings that have realized their full potential and are worth following and imitating. And we find um, spiritual practices and things to do every day that reshape us and make us into who we want to be. For me, I keep coming back to Jesus Christ, someone who didn't start very high up in the world, but still figured out a way to give all of himself for the healing of the world directly around him. And his example of how he treated people and how he gave of himself for other people, how he forgave people that by all rights, he didn't have to forgive. His example has helped me work toward becoming the kind of person I want to be with my wife, with my kids, with the people around me and in my understanding of myself. And the ancient mystical spiritual disciplines that I've learned how to practice have also had a huge impact on shaping my own self-understanding, who I am on the inside, how I think about my connection with the world and with other creatures. And I'm not there yet, but I'm moving toward a place where uh, I really do feel a sense of peace and love and connection with all things. And so those three things are never going to change, no matter our relationship to information. Life is still a mystery, and I still want to be a part of it. I still have to choose who I'm going to be, and I still need help to be who I'm going to be. And we can talk, talk, talk about what's true and what's not true and what's historically accurate and what's not historically accurate, but those things are not going to change. What I've had to ask myself is, does the person of Jesus Christ represent what I think is a fully realized human being? And the answer is yes. And that's why I'm still here. Now, that's kind of a general overview of why I'm still a Christian. I'm going to get into some specific issues that are problematic for Christianity and tell you how I've learned to think about those things in new ways. So if you have a problem with Christianity or one of the tenets of our faith and you'd like me to address it, um, please comment below and I'll get to it. And if you want to keep up with these videos and follow along with me as I go through these questions, then make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you next time.